Jared Poland Fronos Photo.com here with another Adorama Picks rapid fire critique. And this time I've got Saints Photography Club. I believe this is a school, and they submitted first off all of their galleries and wanted me to critique it. But I sent it back and said, Give me your 10 best or 10, select 10 photos, and I'll critique them. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we've got this picture. I like this image a lot. I like what's going on. I like the composition. The, the, whether it's cropped or not doesn't matter. I like this framing. You've got the glove. You've cut off the legs at a perfect place. You've got the arm. You've got the hand moving. Looks like a, a curveball coming because of the way that the fingers are there. He's going to pop it down. And I like the way that the rain is falling. It's nice. Now, before we get to the settings, let's talk about the processing. I think that this image could have more oomph if it was black and white, or maybe even a sepia tone. I just think it it lends well to an overcast, rainy day. A more black and white is going to create more interest. I don't know why I can't think of the word. I can't think of the word, but I think it would be better to go black and white. Let's look at the settings. We have 1 640th of a second, 5.6 ISO 640, 260 millimeters. Let's see what lens it is. Scrolly McScrollerson, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. We have here, where is it? Where is it? What is it? Well, I found it earlier. Uh, 55, so it's a 55 to 300 Nikon. All right, 55 to 300, 640 ISO. I don't know why the uh, the hand's m getting some blur here. Obviously, he's moving pretty darn fast, uh, and you can see that his elbow's getting that too. If you wanted to freeze that motion, then you're looking at using a faster shutter speed. And 640 ISO, you could go to 2,000 ISO. You could go to 2,500 ISO with this camera without any issues. Uh, I've done 4,000 ISO without a problem, but that's if you wanted to freeze the motion. But some of my things with this image are just go ahead and, and try to edit it differently. So now we've got a cockeyed image we've got a the the horizons aren't straight which first and things first takes me out of this image completely it makes me want to throw up and i've said that before that any time it's cockeyed and this dutch angle stuff it doesn't work it just just look at it it looks like everything's running downhill there's no reason why this angle shouldn't be straight you got to get these straight uh this is just one of those things to do the image is okay. There's not much going on. Yes, there's an action shot here, but it's for some reason it's just not grabbing me. And maybe that's the processing, or maybe that's the extra large official in the background. Man, he's more like a medium large official. You know, this is the thing when you're shooting with a 5.6 lens. Where are we at? We are at f5 you can see the difference of how the background doesn't get blown out also it's at 155 millimeters if this was all the way out at 300 millimeters then yes the extra large medium large official in the background would be blown out more similar to what's going on back there now um so another thing is processing i would boomify this i think it's way too flat for what it is you need to pump that up and i think it would stand out more and as a side note on officials being large i used to get crap for my hair and they kind of stopped giving me games because of my hair and they talk about officials need to look presentable and yes i agree pre officials need to look presentable well i look pretty damn good in my opinion other than having a big ass afro which i think is fine so what i told them was when you tell the fat officials to lose 50 pounds and they do it i'll consider cutting my hair well there's still fat officials skating around the ice that looks bad anyway perception how are you perceived on the ice no offense uh don't like that photo terribly too much for multiple reasons this is much better there's a lot more action going on we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine players in here this is a great action shot again it needs to be processed better it needs to be boomified more it just needs to come out and pop you'll see the difference go up with your exposure slightly go up with that contrast maybe change your levels to medium or just strong play with it see what works but don't forget that processing is so darn important. And again, the background becomes distracting because of the lens being shot at f5. Uh, okay, one six well, one sixteen hundredth of a second sec, of a second is fine. Uh, taken with the D seven thousand. This is a much better action shot. You just need to boomify it. Come up with the exposure a little bit. That way, it's all gonna pop more. But much better. You see how the lines are straight going across? It doesn't look cockeyed. It's not bad. Uh, I can't use this. Like, the reason is 
The kid's arm is blocking. It would be good. You got to get away from the goal. You got to shoot down towards the goalie. Fill the frame like you did, but you got to get the goal frame. You got to get the you got to get the front of the player in there to give it some more interest. This is just a shot of a guy jumping in the air trying to stop the ball. One through twentieth of a set. One thirty two hundredth of a second. Five three. Again, two hundred twenty millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and make some suggestions here in a second, which is uh, right now. Try to be out at the 300 range or between two to 300 with this lens. Um, you're going to want to compress the background as much as possible because look how distracting it is that this kid's standing here with those bright shoes. And obviously this is practice because the kid's on the field right here. But look how distracting the wall is. It's just – and there's not a lot of context here with the goal. Get down on a lower angle. It looks like you're standing with sports photos. Get down on the ground, lower, on your knees, then shoot towards the goal. Get the goal frame in the background so you have some context there. That's what's missing in this image. And again, it looks like it's straight out of the camera, not really processed with the raw file. So we've got something similar going on here. we got the goalie. It's unbelievable that th that ball is extremely hard and goalies don't have pads on. That is insane. insane. Sanity rising, in my opinion. Crazy. What I, I'm thinking this is higher than five six. Oh wow, four eight. That you know why I, I said it looked like it was going to be wider than uh, than uh, five six because it shot at one thirty five. So the background is not compressing that much. Again, back up if you need to. Zoom in. I don't care if you're at five six to get these shots. It's going to compress the background more because look how distracting it is with this kid on the clipboard and this guy back here and all this stuff in here. Fill the frame more with the uh, with the action going on. Move away from the goal, more to the left. That's going to be a, a better angle to shoot to get the goalie there. Or also backing up behind the goal is going to get the players coming towards you there. Moving forward, swimming shot. Not the easiest thing to do. If this is that same lens, it's going to be tough. Well, it's a 2.8 lens. Let's see what lens it is. 98 millimeters. 70 to 200, 2.8. All right. What are the settings? We are at 1 400th of a second, 2.8 at 640 ISO. Oh, wow. So we are pushing this this camera to the limit right now. To the limit. Oh, no, wait. It's an Nikon D4. I didn't even notice that. We are not pushing it terribly too far to the limit. It should look much better than this. It really should. This is not a good photo. Knowing that it's with the D4 and 70 to 200. <sighs> okay. So here, here come some recommendations. This is, it, it, I actually don't think this is in focus, and that's why it looks so bad. Because autofocus, yeah, that's definitely not in focus. That, that is why it looks bad. I like what we're going for here. But here's some techniques that you can use. If you're having trouble with focus, you may need to go to 3.2 or 3.5 to give yourself a little bit more depth where 2.8 isn't going to be the easiest thing to get your focus with. You can cheat the system. Well, not cheating the system. I would bump my ISO maybe a little more to 8,000, but I could drop the, uh, the exposure just a little bit. It needs to be brighter, or you could just brighten it up after the fact if you're within that half quarter of a quarter to a half a stop, in my opinion. But first off, this isn't in focus at all, and that's the problem with the image, and that's why it doesn't work out. All right, so I like this. We have an underwater capability of shooting photos. Again, oh, it's a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition. There's not much I can say because it's not really a camera. Um, I, I can't really say much because it's not a camera. I thought maybe they had an underwater observatory. Um, I really can't say much because it's a GoPro. Uh, moving forward, we've got Nikon D7100 now. We've got uh, one, yeah, whoa. Looks like the 70 to 200 again, 2.8. But why? We're not blowing out the background because we're so far away from it. So there's a timing thing. This, you want you want to get her running towards the, uh, what do you call these things? Uh, gates? Are they gates? I don't even know what they're called. They're called things that you jump over. Uh, it's, it's the timing. It's... You want to get this a little higher when she's lower down with her foot just coming over this thing because here it looks awkward with her coming down. In my opinion, it looks awkward. It's a nice frozen moment, but look how much noise. Why do we have so much noise at 3200 ISO? What is going on here? Probably the exposure was off. I, I can't really tell you, but look how much noise is in, in here. That really shouldn't be happening. I, I got to know more because with the 7100, that camera is fantastic in low light. We're only we're at 3200 ISO. 
something's majorly wrong. It's really something's definitely thrown off and I can't figure it out. But those are a couple of opinions on that photo. Moving forward. Hockey shot. All right. My thing. What is this shot with? Well, no information. So there's not much I can do to help you. Um, first off, got to get in, t- in tighter. You know, we've got Butler, number 88, going to the goal, crashing. 22's got a hand or a stick coming in around the goal. He's got the puck between the legs trying to make the stop. you got to get tighter. This is a good place to get action shots, but the exposure is off again. We need to brighten it up. We need to uh, either brighten it up after the fact or drop the uh, drop the shutter speed during the game. Now, you want to be careful dropping the shutter speed because you may not freeze that motion, but we just got to come in tighter with, a, with an image like this. It just has to be done tighter. This is a good action shot. I can see that already. Now, this is much better. We got this guy in the air. We got this guy in the air. You can see how the background is blown out more because it's so much further away. Nikon D3 this time. Lots of different cameras. One eight thousandth of... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What lens are we using now? 70 to 300, 4, 5, 6. 4.5 to 5.6 is a very good lens all around for shooting outdoor sports. The problem is one eight, eight thousandth of a second at 4.5 at 2,500 ISO, there's no reason to be up at that high ISO. It worked here, but if the light gets any brighter, you're not going to have the – and plus, this is edited much better. You don't have any leeway. You could do this at one four thousandth of a second. You can drop your ISO to 1,000 or to 800, um, and you'd be fine. I see what's going on because at 5.6, it's going to drop the, the shutter speed, but I really don't think there's a need to be that bright outside. Even if you shot just at 2,000 or, or 1,200, you'd have plenty of shutter speed to work with even at 5.6, because this is 4.5, it's one stop, you're at 4,000th of a second when you go up to 5.6, so absolutely no problem uh, to go down one stop on the ISO, because then technically it's going to be two stops, one eighth at 4,000, even one 2,000th of a second, you're going to be perfectly fine. So I like this shot much better, you got the ball, you got the kid going up, and it's edited and processed a hell of a lot better than before. What else? Is that it? Am I at 10 images? There's no way that's already 10 images. I talked a lot. How many images are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's ten images. So I hope you enjoyed this one. It was tough. Um, there's a, it, there's a. I, I just hope you took something from it. I don't need to reiterate what I said. But that's pretty much going to be it, guys. If you want to submit your rapid-fire critique, you can do it over on fronosphoto.com. Uh, please do that. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. So I hope you like that Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critique. If you'd like to see more, we've got one more right up here that you could click on or another one down here. Go ahead and click on either one of those to get another Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critique or you could always subscribe to my channel right here so that you can get the latest videos as they go live and be the first person to see them. So there you have it, guys. Thank you very much and see ya.